Do social networks like Facebook or G Plus give more personal freedom or do they take it away? Well, those two mistreat the users. For instance, by requiring users to give their real names. That's an, a policy that puts some people in danger. Uh, so you shouldn't use them. But Facebook does many other bad things as well. Uh, it, Facebook does massive surveillance. If there is a like button in a page, Facebook knows that it was who visited that page. And it can get the IP address of the computer visiting the page even if the person is not a Facebook user. So you visit several pages that have like buttons and Facebook knows that you visited all of those even if it doesn't really know who you are. How does free software promote personal freedom? Free software literally gives you freedom in the area of computing. It means that you can control your computing. It means that the users individually and collectively have control over their computing. And in particular, that means they can protect themselves from the malicious features that are likely to be in proprietary software. Now, this doesn't automatically give you freedom in some other area of life. To get that, you have to fight for it. But human rights support each other. In an age where a lot of what we do, we do with computers, if we don't have freedom in our computing, that makes it harder for us to defend or fight for freedom in other areas. So you lose one, one set of human rights and it's harder for you to keep the others. I started the free software movement in 1983 as a campaign for freedom. During the 90s, the GNU plus Linux system was catching on and a lot of the people who started using it appreciated it only for its practical advantages and they didn't think in terms of freedom. As a result, in the free software community, there were two different political positions. There was the free software movement, those of us who said, we are doing this for freedom, we insist on freedom, and there were the other people who said, we like the software, but we don't care about the ethics. So there was a debate between these two camps. But in 1998, the other camp coined the term open source so that they could cause us to be forgotten. They figured that they were more numerous, that they could say this, that they would never raise an ethical issue, and then we wouldn't be, for, we wouldn't be noticed. And it almost worked. The reason it hasn't worked is that we in the free software movement have pushed very hard to make our views heard. So open source stands for those other views it talks about basically the same, more or less the same software, but with a totally different philosophy. And the philosophy is where I disagree with it. If free software is suddenly enforced in the world, wouldn't it cause a um, massive cash outflow from related industries and halt innovation? Who cares? What good is a so-called industry that's creating tools to subjugate people? I won't use the non-free software at all I spend my, I dedicate my effort to getting away from it. So if they stopped making it, that would be great. I wish they would. I hope for the day when they won't make non-free software anymore. What do you think of the anonymous hackers group? Do you think what they do is justified by the uh, targets of their attacks? The anonymous protests, for the most part, work by having a lot of people send a lot of commands to a website and it can't handle so many requests. This is equivalent to how a crowd of people going to the door of a building and having a protest on the street. It's basically legitimate. And when people object to this, let's look at who they are and what they do. Usually they're people who are doing much worse things. And now a question from a Facebook uh, user, Federico Capuano. What do you think about the phenomenon of open wireless community networks, the grassroots alternative to wireless access coverage developed by municipalities? Well, I think that they theoretically can be a very good thing, assuming that you can run them without proprietary software. I mean, if I needed a proprietary program to connect to one, I wouldn't connect to one. But the big question is, 
will they be gateway to the internet because if they're not then they're not going to do much good for you you know if there's a a community network in your community and you can connect to the computers of the other people who live near you well how many of them do you know and how many of the people you know live near you exactly so the point is that a, a localized network that say deals with w with your town it won't do you much good a user named Ivan Marjanovic asks what do you think about carrier IQ and collection of user data by mobile operators in general well this is an example of malicious features in non-free software those mobile phones are being run by non-free software so it's no surprise that they have malicious features in them the most commonly used non-free programs do do you think USA is becoming hostile to uh, competition and innovation as the companies like Apple and Microsoft are gaming the system I had to point out that innovation is not my highest value human rights are my hu highest value so I don't want to get into the sort of dialogue that treats innovation as if it were the primary goal um, but to some extent uh, with software patents the US has become a dangerous place for software development including innovative software development because when a program is innovative that means it has some new ideas in it but it also has lots of well-known ideas in it a large program combines thousands of ideas uh, so if you've got some new ideas and you want to use them in order to use them you've got to combine them with a lot of other ideas that are well known and if you're not allowed to do that because those other ideas are patented you can't use your new idea do you think there's a place for patents in less uh, software tech like normal engineering there should not be patents in the software field at all patents should not affect software it's dangerous to software developers and users to allow patents to interfere with them by the way how do you think how much control should uh, the USA have over the internet no more than anyone else which is well basically should there be any control at all the, I don't I don't think it would be safe to have any global control over the internet because we could predict that that global control would work for the empire of the mega corporations and it would attack human rights what can be done to make the commercial world use uh, freeware and shareware what would I do to convince companies to use free software I, I hope they will <coughs> for their sake but I don't push hard to convince companies to switch to free software because it's not a efficient use of my time if somebody's not inclined to listen to me it's better if I speak to someone else why is Microsoft always plagued by viruses and faults well it's to a large extent because of some design decisions that they've made that created vulnerabilities I don't know why they made those decisions but I well I don't I can't say whether they made those decisions for the sake of vulnerability I'm sure that they heard the arguments that those decisions would lead to vulnerabilities because people have known that for a long time what pushes people to download products without permission of its authors like is it stinginess or software soft I have no idea but I disagree with the usual views about that why is it bad to use an unauthorized copy of a proprietary program because it's proprietary so an unauthorized copy is almost as nasty as an authorized copy of the same program they're both nasty because they're proprietary the users don't have control over them if they pay the developer that makes it worse because they're rewarding this delinquency that's why the authorized copy is worse but they're both bad because they're both proprietary software if you want freedom you have to get rid of them both because they both control you so when people think it's just an issue of money then they might think that 
uh, running the unauthorized copy is good because it's a way to save money. Or someone else who thinks the most important thing in the world is for this evil developer to get more money would say the unauthorized copy is bad because the evil developer doesn't get money that way. But I don't care about the money one way or the other. I just say this evil developer shouldn't be making proprietary software because it's taking away people's freedom. And you shouldn't be using that software because it would take away your freedom. And I don't use that software. If you offered me an authorized copy and you wanted to pay me a million dollars to take it, I still wouldn't take it unless I could throw it away immediately. Yeah, if I could take it and take the million dollars and throw away the program, then I would say yes. What's your opinion about the rise and influence of the so-called pirate parties in Europe? Do you think uh, they will bring a change? I more or less agree with their positions. And I'm glad to see that these issues are becoming election issues. I don't necessarily endorse pirate parties because to do that, I'd have to know what all the other parties are. And these are not the only issues I think are important. For instance, uh, putting in a, a, a limit on global heating is extremely important. Many pirate parties don't take a position on that. So I might choose to support a Green Party instead.